Hey there, YouTube. Jimmy with To The Top Crane. Got another uh, crane repair. Actually, um, this could apply to most any machine that's got air conditioning. The air conditioning in the upper had stopped working. And when I refer to upper and lower, we've got the upper cab and the upper part of the, the crane that is for the crane portion. And then the lower cab is in the carrier or the part with the tires and wheels on it. So um, anyway, the air conditioner had quit in the upper and anybody that operates equipment with windows and limited ventilation knows that without air conditioning, even on a 60 degree day, it can get unbearably hot inside the cab. So uh, this is our air conditioning unit on the outside of the crane. Got our receiver dryer, fan, condenser, and then over on the other side in the cab, we've got the evaporator and whatnot. Uh, I put my gauges on it and found that there was no Freon in it. So it lost its Freon over the course of the winter. I also started digging a little deeper and wanted to know where that Freon was going. So I shot a can of dye in it and then uh, checked it with an ultraviolet light and I found right here there's a fitting and there's a pressure switch that screws on there well the pressure switch the back end of it was blown out had a big crack in it I don't know how it happened why it happened it doesn't matter it was defective um, so I'm gonna sell a new pressure switch we'll throw a vacuum pump on it get it vac down uh, make sure that it holds vacuum and then if it, everything checks out to where it holds vacuum then we'll go ahead and recharge the system so uh yeah i'll throw my camera down here we'll get the switch thrown in real quick and then uh get gauges and vacuum pump on it so here's our switch came from houston texas from sedano america great people down there to deal with anytime we've had to call for parts i mean they are, they go above and beyond the parts and service department for Tadano is pretty outstanding we'll go to the other side where the fittings are get gauges and a pump on it see what it does Okay, we got our gauges hooked up back there. Uh, they're, they're relatively difficult to get to. They're clear back there in the back behind the swing motor and some other stuff, the auxiliary heater. And I'm not a small guy by any means, so they're tucked clear back there in the corner. But anyway, we got them hooked up. We got our vacuum pump hooked up. And it's also important to note, and you can tell by looking at the gauges, <clears throat> there's no refrigerant in this system. Um, there is a federal law against knowingly discharging refrigerant into the atmosphere. So, if there was any refrigerant into this system, you'd have to use a reclaimer to put this under vacuum. And what that does is it's a vacuum pump hooked up to another tank that it can pull the refrigerant out of the system, store it into the onboard tank onto the reclaimer, and put the system under vacuum. Then you can recharge it, and nothing gets um, lost to atmosphere. This system, however, has lost all of its Freon, or all of its refrigerant, um, over the course of the winter. So there's none in the system. So that being the case, I can uh, go ahead and put the system under vacuum with a standard vacuum pump, and we can check to make sure there's no leaks. Uh, so I'll fire this up. It's got to it's run for, you know, some people say half an hour. I let them run for at least 15 minutes. And if I've got time, then I'll let it go for a half an hour pumping to evacuate the air out of the system. So I just turned the vacuum pump on. You should be able to see the needle coming down. And it'll take it a little bit. That's a pretty big system. 
but it should pull that needle almost clear down to 30. And then what we'll do is we'll uh, close that valve, this one here on the side, once it, once it pumps for about 15 or 20 minutes, whatever. I'll close that valve and then I'll just let it sit there and make sure that the needle doesn't move. If the needle starts coming up, then we obviously have a leak somewhere and we have to address that before we put refrigerant in. If the needle doesn't come up at that point, then we'll be fine to charge the system. So I'll shut the camera off. We'll let this run for a little bit and see what we end up with. Okay, it's been uh, about 20 minutes. You can see it's pulled down there to basically 30 inches of vacuum. I'm gonna go ahead and close this valve. And then, and this is on the low pressure side. Then I'll shut the vacuum pump off. And we're gonna just sit here and watch this gauge for a few minutes and just make sure that it doesn't move. Um, while we're doing, while I'm waiting for this, I'll uh, throw a couple other pieces of information out there. Uh, I'm by no means a HVAC genius, but I can give you guys some words of caution. Whenever handling refrigerant, make sure you have gloves and eye protection. I know I always mention eye protection. Eye protection, eye protection. You only have two of them. And uh, man, that, that refrigerant can do some damage to your eyeballs. Also, uh, it can cause frostbite almost instantly. So you definitely want to protect your hands. Um, another piece of advice your can will hook to this yellow line in the center. This yellow line is isolated by these two valves. So the red side is your high pressure side, which is on this valve. The blue side is your low pressure side, which is on this valve. When you have a can of Freon or refrigerant connected to this yellow hose, do not open this valve. Never, never open the high pressure side with a can or refrigerant connected. You can actually overpressurize the can and blow it up in your hands. So, um, I believe the cans are rated for around 170 psi. Um, it's the ambient temperature out here is about 80 degrees right now. So, when I charge this system, the low pressure side is going to be somewhere between 40 and 50 psi. And the high pressure side is going to be between somewhere between 170 and 210. So your system's charged based on ambient temperature. You can charge them by weight, um, but doing so, if there were refrigerant still in the system and you uh, put the appropriate amount of weight that your system calls for in on top of that refrigerant, then you'll end up with an overcharged system. So I like to charge them based on pressure. Uh, but if you have that can connected to this yellow hose and the valve on top of the can's open and you have 200 psi in the system and you open this red valve you run a very serious risk of blowing that can up in your hands which i would venture to say would be a trip to the hospital so if you're unsure on this stuff my best advice, don't mess with it. Take it to someone that knows what they're doing and uh, get your system serviced by a trained professional that does HVAC work. I've been around this stuff for years and years and years and years. Uh, you know, I've, I've been a heavy equipment mechanic since, shoot, 1998. Um, I was actually, before I was even... Uh, out of high school I was tinkering with stuff. When I was in middle school and elementary school I was tinkering with engines and taking stuff apart and figuring things out. So just over the years I've learned 
enough about refrigerator HVAC systems to be confident with them and also to give you guys some advice so cans connected never open this red one all your charging goes in the blue side all your freon or refrigerant goes in the blue side so this is the only valve you'll mess with when you have a can connected um, also all of your charging happens with the system operating so the engine has to be running you set your AC controls to max AC and then start adding refrigerant to it it's also I mentioned a federal law earlier about uh, knowingly discharging refrigerant into the atmosphere that is absolutely against the law to like if this if this system still had refrigerant in it and I just hooked up a standard vacuum pump without a way of recovering that refrigerant it would be against the law this system was completely vacated it had bled itself out and there was no refrigerant left in it but along with that it is also against the law to knowingly add refrigerant to a system that you know is leaking so say this thing had a, a slow leak in it where I had to add a can every week it's actually illegal to do that because you're knowingly releasing refrigerant into the atmosphere by doing so so you have to have your system um, tight it's it's got there's got to be no leaks before you can start adding refrigerant to it but it's been a few minutes I'm gonna give this a little bit longer that needle hasn't moved a bit we'll snap a can on it fire the crane up set the air conditioner to max AC and uh, start charging the system up we're gonna try to get it cold enough to cool your drinks off inside Okay, I'm gonna have to talk over the crane a little bit. Um, I've got, got the system running, it's on max AC. I figured I'd try to move this camera in on this can. Maybe you guys can read this. This is exactly what I was saying earlier. Hopefully, you can read that and it's not out of focus. I'm using a GoPro, so we'll see if it uh, does its own thing. Yeah, no more than 170 PSI into this can or you're in trouble. So I've got just a little bit of refrigerant left in this can. There's not much. I'm going to go ahead and shoot it into the system. I've got gloves on. I'm trying to do this one-handed because I'm holding the camera. shake the cans a little bit while I'm filling them for some reason it just seems like it helps it uh, go in the system a little better I've seen guys actually invert them you can you can do some system damage by inverting the can and dumping that liquid straight into the low pressure side pressure side of your system is supposed to be uh, just a gas the way uh, the way your system works is that on the high pressure side the refrigerant is a liquid it goes through an orifice and then also into the evaporator which is in the air box in the cabin of the vehicle or whatever you know car crane truck whatever once it goes to that orifice it's allowed to uh, expand and uh, change to a gas state and it's that change to a gas state that causes the refrigerant to chill but it's also carrying the heat from inside the cabin to the condenser which is on the outside of the vehicle the condenser does the opposite of the evaporator it turns the gas back into a liquid and is pressurized back in through the system again
hopefully I explained that where everybody can understand it. All right, this can's empty. I'm gonna have to uh, shut the camera off for a second and uh, get another can going. Okay, we got another can hooked up. We'll start adding some. Instantly the can gets cold. That other can was so cold that uh, there was ice on the outside of it or frost. Which is another reason to wear gloves. I mean, it just makes it a little easier to hang on to these when they're freezing cold. So you can see our low pressure site. Now our compressor just kicked on. It seemed like a needle had a pretty rapid drop. Our high pressure side's starting to creep up. Our low pressure side's pulling down. Okay, you can see our high pressure side. It's getting up close to 100. Our low pressure side still, I mean, it's pulled down to almost zero. So it's just still just way low. It's a pretty big system by the time you factor in all the lines and whatnot that run around the cab and the other side of the crane. So it takes quite a bit of refrigerant. As you can see, this can is uh, frosted over. shut the camera off and uh, get ready for the next can. Okay, we got our refrigerant in. I stopped a little short on our pressures. The temperature has actually dropped a little bit. Uh, it's probably right around 70 degrees or so, 75. We've got some storms moving in. Uh, as you can tell, if you look at the windshield on this crane, tell that air conditioner is cold and we've got the telltale puddle underneath the cab so it is uh, it's doing what it's supposed to be doing sitting in here it, it's pretty chilly I think if you had the door closed and you sat here with idling for long enough well even if you were just in here about five minutes I would say that uh, you would be cool enough you would want to turn it down set your beverages right in front of that vent it's gonna keep them cold so yeah there's uh here's your air conditioning lesson for the day I guess if I said anything wrong in there as far as uh, misstating information someone will probably call me out on it but that's fine too anyway shut the camera off pick my stuff up and uh, probably get out of here for the day. It's getting pretty close to quitting time.